All right, we are live uh, with Victor Kukos. How are you, Victor? Excellent, excellent, Sunny. Nice to nice to catch up, and uh, you know, excited about uh, always excited about uh, discussing uh, controversial matters and <laughs> this wonderful new world of crypto and uh, and everything around it. So uh, between fellow Torontonians, always fun. Fellow Torontonians, right? I'm trying to think back, Victor. Um, you know, you and I, we've had, I'd say, an illustrious past. You know, we, we've crossed paths here and there. Uh, I remember back in the, the meetup Bitcoin event days, uh, you were one of our regular attendees. And I recall we had uh, some great experiences back then. And we've kind of kept in touch over the years. And yeah, and you're one of the the people that I... I uh, I consider to be doing, you know, impactful work, if you will. I mean, I think that's kind of hard to to say with uh, with a lot of projects in the space, but uh, yeah, I really liked. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, likewise, I have a great respect for you know for what you've done and what you're doing now. There's, uh, you know, uh, builders are um, rare. Builders are rare. Yeah, that that should be on a T-shirt. Real, real builders. Uh, so many scams. So many, you know, uh, so much noise in the space, and it's it's always great to to share information, thoughts um, with with people who are actually, you know, um, putting real value in, in in the hands of many. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. So I was going to say, let's maybe start with uh, you know, I'm calling this series the, the Bitcoin Stories. Mainly because I think all of us, despite you know what projects we're working on, the one kind of common denominator, if you will, is uh, is at one point or another, all of us were captivated by by Bitcoin, and so I, where I like to start is before Bitcoin, right? A more just like your story. Uh, take as much time as you want, or as little time as you want. Um, it's up to you. But I, I'd love to know, you know, what, what what was your lens into the world before you came in, or you know, before you learned about Bitcoin? My lens is, uh, you know, like the the funny mirrors at the, you know, uh, at a carnival fair, you know, at the at the X, you know, uh, the funny mirrors where you know the lens kind of. You know, changes <laughs> uh, changes everything. Um, as soon as you move a little bit, you change the angle. Very, very colorful uh, experience. Uh, you know, just to try to summarize this a little bit. You know, I'm a recycled aerospace engineer. Um, I was used to make landing gears. Um, shifted to automotive, uh, fairly senior positions in in, uh, in operations management. Uh, but for the last 17 years or so, I've been uh, focused more on consulting um, and with a specific focus on innovation funding uh, from R&D tax credits to various grants and incentives as well as, as uh, risk capital. So I was very fortunate to, to be able to, to grow into that space working with a lot of tech startups with a lot of uh, in, in, in all exciting verticals. And by virtue of doing that, um, basically, you know, the nature of, of, of my, my assignments, my, uh, you know, uh, work with clients, I, I had access under the hood. I could see the whole tech stack, whatever the vertical was, as well as financial, financial data. So I developed a bit of, a, a bit of uh, expertise in, in, in guiding young startups um, so when I'm, when I'm saying that, you know, like my career was, you know, my career path was, was slightly unusual and, and, and sort of more and more, more like a chameleon, um, adapting to technology trends, adapting, you know, growing with the ecosystem, especially, especially here in Toronto, um, but always surrounded by young, bright people, lots of learning every day. So, uh, in 2015, I believe, um, you know, I was I started hearing about Bitcoin, about uh, you know blockchain technology, distributed ledger technology. They really picked my interest for a number of reasons. One, uh, working in aerospace, you know, we had uh, uh, we always had issues with fault, fault tolerant systems. And as a matter of fact, I, I wish I could bring a couple of cryptographers out of who I've worked with in the past. 
out of retirement. That would be that would be really cool because they're really really cool guys. So I had a I had a bit of an understanding, you know, maybe more than 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 the average person without being a programmer or a developer myself. Um, but I I, I kind of got a sense of where this was going and what what the intent was. Um, at the same time, interestingly enough, my kids and I don't even know, you know, they come, come home one day and says, well, we're mining Bitcoin on the, on, uh, on the computers in the, in the library at high school. And I'm saying, you know, initially, initially I didn't pay attention. I thought it was just, you know, like some, some, some new form of Minecraft or, 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 or something. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't catch my, my, my ear. Uh -huh. then we started talking about it and I realized, well, hey, you know, this is, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is interesting. Um, well, to make a long story short, you know, I, I, I started reading the white paper, Satoshi's white paper. I started looking at, you know, Ethereum, started getting involved. Um, <clears throat> I did, I prepared a couple of um, uh, grants applications and, and uh, R&D tax credit for, for, for a few startups in, uh, in Toronto. So that's when I really, you know, took a deep dive head first. And I think I had never climbed out of the rabbit hole. On, on on many levels, both speculative as I'm, you know, trying to do now with three commas, and also from trying to to understand the fundamentals and 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 so on and so forth. Unfortunately, you know, we got out pretty early. You know, Bitcoin went from seven bucks to seventeen bucks, and we thought we won the lottery. And, <laughs> um, you know, like like many early entrants, we we're not quite sure. And I'm I'm speaking about myself and and, and my kids. Um, we made some. What year? What year are we in now, Victor? This was what this was sixteen. Year? Now, yeah. in sixteen, so okay, 16, okay, okay. Early, early sixteen. Um, you know, we uh, you know we played a little bit uh, around. The exchanges were popping up. Um, you know, I was talking to even back in the day. I was talking to the guys at Poloniex, um, and um, you know. Basically, you know, testing the waters. I, I was I was still on the fence in a sense from from you know strictly from a, from a value standpoint. I still couldn't fathom, you know, uh, how this asset class is gonna is gonna evolve. And to the day, I remain a bit of a skeptic. And and hopefully, we'll cover some of that, uh, uh, you know, in the course of our discussion. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that there was. Uh, very early adopter, but early enough to to see the evolution and and you know when when things started popping, uh, popping the ICO craze and 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 the the, the subsequent waves of, of growth and and uh, adoption. So just just to sum up a couple of key points that I heard there. Um, so one was you 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 were you studied did you say aerospace engineering? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's, I mean, I studied engineering and if I'm not mistaken, that was definitely the hardest one <laughs> or one of the hardest ones. Oh, I, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. I mean, you, you study stuff in school, you don't know what you're going to do with it. And, mm. and um, you know, depending on, on, on opportunities, I, I was fortunate enough to, to apply some of that knowledge. I was VP of uh, quality engineering at a mm. Uh, manufacturer, um, we we're producing some other uh, surface controls and avionics, but a large company that became part of Goodrich uh, later on. Um, <laughs> fascinating. I, I, I remember launching the 777, uh, ex the extended 777 landing gear, which is a, to the day is still the biggest landing gear ever made. Really? So, Interesting. In fact, I, I worked for a company called Kwanzer for almost 10 years, and the founder of that company, uh, Dr. Jacob Apkarian, uh, had worked on the Canada Space Arm. Yeah, and, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's cool stuff. We had some, um, some consultations with them all on, a, on a very, very narrow level in terms of some hydraulics, but... Um, with, with Kwanzer or with some other company? No, no. With, no, not, no, with, with uh, Canada Space Arm. Interesting. Yeah, with Canada space arm, just just some 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 small exchanges. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and then you said you you got into consult. You were doing you so you're doing engineering management I operations automotive, automotive. Yeah, I automotive after a while, you know, for, for a few years, and then mm. uh, I've done a little bit of consulting and in, in operations management, and 
um, crisis management, mm. uh, recall situations, very pretty, pretty massive and nasty uh, scenarios. But, and, uh, and then you said something that I wanted to just touch on. Uh, you said you, you had some exposure to fault tolerant systems. Uh, so do you want to maybe just explain what that means? Because I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me, but I, I don't think most people would. Well, uh, obviously, yeah, sure. It's obviously nowhere near the scale you you, you, you have in a, in a, you know, massive distributed uh, ledger type environment. But um, you know, if you look at um, if you look at you know uh, all the redundancy that is built into uh, all the all the controls, mm. um, graphs, right? Um, you you have situations where you have you know false negatives, false positives, um, sensors malfunction. Mm -hmm. um, for, for critical functions, you have a multitude of of inputs and you, you need a system which, you know, in, in avionics and, and to the day, they're still controlled, you know, through, through hardware means, um, simply because the CAN bus, you know, and, and, and all the communications on, a, on you know, on, uh, on an aircraft are, are very narrowly structured, but still you have, you have this issue of who's right, who's wrong, you know, uh, when one gauge tells you that you're going fast and one telling you you're going slow, you know, how do you, how do you differentiate what, what, what mechanism? What's real? What's, what, what's real because it's consequential. It's a matter of life and death. Uh, we've seen uh, several examples in, in not so, you know, in, in not so uh, like in re fairly recent years, you know, when aircraft fell out of the sky because one, one particular digital tube so, so just curious, so how, how does an airplane, just generally speaking, address that issue? They have multiple sensors that are all kind of yeah, checking yeah, on one yeah, another so that if one or two die. There's there's a lot of redundancy and then, then you have, um, you know, you have uh, um, multiple layers of software on top of that, uh, you know, phenomenal computing power that you have on, on, on an airplane to, to analyze the data. And um, you know, in, in, in most cases, uh, give you the the correct solution or the the, the, the correct correct mm -hmm. answer. Mm -hmm. So it's redundancy. But but it's 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 in a sense, you know, if you if you go back to the you know the business in general problem, you you, you have the same trust issue, you know, and and uh, of course on a smaller scale, but. Um, I was dreaming back back in the day, you know, that some of some of the gizmos we had, some of the little microcontrollers that, that we have, <laughs> that we scale. If you if you put thousands or millions of them, because they're fairly inexpensive, in a big box, if you could potentially bring that into, you know, into the crypto world. So, so I'm so glad you said that. So, and by the way, Victor, I know I'm not like uh, going in a straight line here, but that's part of the point, right? Um, uh, but I, I wanted to, I'm so glad you said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I'm so glad you said Byzantine general, because I find that is, um, at least when I got into Bitcoin, that was one of the most interesting kind of concepts that, that I came across. And when I, you know, peeled the onion back, it was just, it just got more and more interesting. But do, do you know what that is, the Byzantine general uh, problem like do, do you yeah, know I mean, do you want to maybe quickly explain it because i think it's fascinating well i mean it's 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 basically you know uh it's it, it, it's a way of of sifting through noise you have you have a general uh, leading a number of armies around the you know around uh, a fortress let's say they they, they want to capture they want to attack and, and, and capture uh, the enemy who's inside the fortress now you uh you know, you can communicate with all of them at the same time. Uh, they each can talk to, to to each other. How do you how do you ensure that when you give an attack signal, you don't know how loyal they are to you? There's various factions, various tribes who happen to, you know, be part of this 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 uh, operation. How do you make sure that you know uh, that they're all going to act uh, according to plan or according to whatever command? Uh, you give and that's solving for that problem is really what you know uh, started being addressed through Satoshi's white paper uh, in, and embodied in the, in the Bitcoin uh, 
idea and later on obviously you know evolved through other consensus mechanism other consensus mechanisms were built but again trying to solve the same the same problem Mm-mm. okay so well, yeah, i mean we well, can talk about this well, probably for, yeah sorry go ahead you know between incentives and disincentives and the 51 percent you know um uh attack you know how do how do you how, how do you disincentivize that 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 no small group can can take control of of, of the whole um and this was an unsolved mathematical problem until satoshi came along is it not true or well uh, not necessarily i mean it's 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 i think uh, theoretically you know there's there's many ways to solve the problem but the the, the brilliant mechanism that was created you know using cryptography and using you know, you know and and the system of incentives and disincentives is, is what's brilliant mm-hmm. and the fact that it became instantly applicable instantly mm-hmm. useful as opposed to just a a theory theoretical uh, construct that okay you know we know i mean here's a big you know you know 10 blackboards of, of formulas what do i do with it well this is how you apply it right got you got you yeah okay so yeah continue 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 all right and the the, the other thing that caught my eye and, and very few people talk about it and give credit is a very fairly obscure um accountant of, uh, from uh, from the, the the czech republic um, who um, even wrote a book? He died in relative anonymity. anonymity uh, didn't get a lot of traction at the time. But if you look at history, you know, if you look at back in the day, um, you know, uh, if you look at global co- corporations in the 1600s, yes, there was such thing. Um, the Hudson Bay Company is, is a prime example of a company that still exists, and they had ways to deal with the agency problem even back then. Then the Medici Bank came with, and the monks with double ledger accounting. How would you run, you know, as a bank? How would you run, um, you know, a, uh, um, you know, a subsidiary, you know, in, in London from Florence when a letter would take, you know, six weeks? you know, to, to get from one place to another. And, you know, you, you had the double ledger entries and the double ledger idea to, you know, keep things under control. Um, and this Czech guy, and I apologize, I, I, I forgot the name, but we can we can quickly Google it. And when you say but double entry, just, just to clarify, you're talking like a debit and a and a, a credit correct. type of thing, right? Just okay, right. yeah, continue, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And this guy wrote a lot about, you know, and it became very consequential and, and a, a lot of people started digging in and, you know, digging out the book and reading it after the Enron disaster, you know, started talking about triple ledger accounting. And now you have Bitcoin and you have the, you know, you have blockchain technology. And, and what is that third? So we just said debit, credit. What is that third element that makes the triple entry? Well, it's, it wasn't just debit and credit, but, but having multiple records maintained by different parties mm. the same truth, the same mm-hmm. reality. Because, you know, the Medici's, you know, when they sent an auditor to, to, to London mm. and their records didn't match theirs, you know, off went the head. Mm. <laughs> and that was the disincentive to, 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 to cheat the system, right? Mm. But double ledger is, is the Enron fiasco has proven is, is not sufficient. Right, if an auditor can collude or, 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 you know, uh, willingly or not, with, with, you know, with their, uh, you know, with their subject of audit, and, and, and then you end up with, you know, tremendous loss of value, and, and, and uh, it, it's, it, it's clearly insufficient. Right. Okay. It, it, sorry. So we hold on. So, so uh, and I know we're supposed to be staying on a storyline here, but this is just so interesting. I think it's really at the heart of, you know, what Bitcoin is and all that, but, but, but just curious. So you, you just said something so that humanity, if you will, realize, you know, after Enron and all that, that, okay, having uh, like the third entry as like a human in the loop or an auditor is, is maybe not as effective because they could collude with the person or entity that they're sure, auditing. If, so how if, does, how does Bitcoin address that? I guess, like what, what, what are they using as that third well, auditing now, mechanism? Now you have all, all the miners, uh, you know, um, and basically, you know, every, every 
block, every transaction is reflected in, in you know, in hundreds, thousands, potentially, on, depending on the network, depending on the underlying blockchain technology, you have thousands of copies now with a strong disincentive mm. to, to prevent a 51% attack. Mm. I mean, even that one, uh, 51%, right? So that's essentially what one of the main vectors of attack that that people talk about right and that that insinuates that 51 percent of the computing power right in the network is is essentially trying to take over the network or something like that um yeah and there were you know there were there were serious concerns uh uh you know related to 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 that uh, especially when you saw the bitcoin price uh drop tremendously back in march um, you know, a lot of miners went out of business. You could, mm. there was a time when you could pick up ASICs for, 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 you know, a dime to the dollar. Um, and there were concerns that, you know, somebody could potentially, you know, became economically, almost economically feasible to, to grab all this cheap hardware, you know, with a very small capex, you could, you know, uh, amass sufficient, uh, hash power to, you know, to sync the network, mm. uh, and sure, I mean the beauty, the beauty of the beauty of you know blockchain and stuff. Everything is recoverable. You can trace things back all the way to the genesis block. Um, but uh, you know, at, at the same time, what's what's the incentive if you can't make money unless you you know you go massively to do it and you massively short uh, Bitcoin on on every possible uh, venue? It's it, it's still you know the math is is still um unfavorable mm. to, to... And, and, and and in the next part of your story i picked up was kind of like how you were a consultant you had this superpower if you will to to, to not only understand these kind of financial stacks and then the code base the ones and zeros you know the actual um kind of the, the code behind it but then at the same time you were consulting so you had to always have your your business hat on it seems right so you always had to kind of think both both ways and i find that's like a common theme amongst a lot of you know early adopters if you will as well is, is that people who spend a lot of time in the trenches thinking about you know money business um uh, so that, that i thought that was fascinating and then the last thing i thought was super cool about your story was the uh, the fact that your kids right i also think that i think kids are going to be at one point, you know, smarter than adults, because I don't know, it just seems like the world is moving in that direction. And so it was actually your children that that brought, you know, uh, Bitcoin to your attention. So that that is fascinating. Well, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, 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 in a sense, fortunate that I have twin boys, and they're, they're 22. And they're both in uh, computer science. So ah, lucky uh, you. <laughs> yeah, they always tinker, they always hack stuff. And mm. Natural evolution uh, for them. Uh, being busy with school now and, and co-op jobs, internships, and stuff, they 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 they, they sort of fell off the wagon a bit. As mm -hmm, as well. mm -hmm. Crypto, um, mm -hmm. but um, you know, there's still there's still interest. There's still a basic understanding, and uh, you know, we're talking maybe over the, the Christmas holidays to sort of regroup and 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 see see what uh especially one of them is very interested in, in fintech and uh he's doing a double major now tom sci and math um so he started getting a taste for um you know big data and analytics and, and stuff like that so we're gonna play with a few things over over the holidays sweet uh, love it it's love fascinating it. it's fascinating now you know we have we have access you can access you know tremendous ai tools, you know, you go TensorFlow with Google or, um, or uh, you know, Watson on, on IBM, it's neater, you know, it's like, you know, you can crunch a ton of data for, for a few bucks. So it really opens tremendous opportunities in, in pretty much every field of science and, and technology. But, um, you know, I'm hoping they'll be uh, not only tech smart, but business smart. And uh, you know how it goes. Yeah, yeah, I can only hope the same for for my daughters. They're they're not as uh, as as old as your kids, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of the role of a parent, right? Make sure they're ready for the world. Um, okay, so I was gonna say, let's maybe switch gears into now. Okay, you're you're fascinated by Bitcoin, uh, but how do you make a move into the space? Um, so it sounds like, I mean, you're now in the space. Yeah, the, You've been in the, the space actual, for some time. Yeah, mm -hmm. the real 
Absolutely. And the real move into the space happened um, in early 2000, late 2016, early 2017. Mm -hmm. um, I was very busy. I didn't have a lot of time to, you know, effectively, you know, I got a taste of, of you know, 10, 20% gains in a day, you know, with, with, with some coins and, and stuff. Um, not being a very savvy or necessarily highly educated trader, I started studying that a little bit on the side. But at the time, I was more more interested in um, in you know creating a, an index portfolio, looking at playing with sharp ratios, playing a little bit with with you know how how do I build a portfolio now that that's going to give me you know some good returns on a risk adjusted basis um, and. Um, there was there was a little software piece um, it was called CoinCube. The guys got hacked. Um, and it's funny because nobody suffered except the owner. He his his account got hacked, and and you know I said, well, enough with this. Uh, I came across um, you know uh, something that was in beta through 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 my network, which was three commas. You know, it wasn't even public uh, basically. Uh, so I started talking to the guys. I uh, I pushed them hard to to pick up this idea of an index portfolio, which is alive and well today on 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 three commas. One thing led to another. I started um, talking about strategy, talking about channel partners, talking about a more a more structured way to develop. The what is an index portfolio again? I know what that means, kind of, sort of, but just want to make sure. Well, I mean, it's it's the idea of creating you know creating a. a portfolio of multiple assets with different weights. Uh, so, you know, there are there are some pretty solid, well-performing portfolios. Uh, MSVI is one, uh, Bletchley indexes is another, uh, which give you portfolios of top 10, top 20, top 40. Um, each obviously have a different performance, different uh, risk profile, you know, just based on, 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 on the very fundamental and basic idea of, of a, of a you know, portfolio theory, right? Mixing a bunch of uh, high risk assets reduces the risk for the entire portfolio, assuming that the assets are not too tightly correlated, um, which we see happens, you know, it goes up and down and, and we can cover that uh, in a, in more in a bit because it's a very, very, very interesting topic. And one of the reasons why I'm not as bullish as others in, 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 in terms of the crypto market at large, um, but anyway, so we started talking. We, we, you know, I became involved with the, with the team. I, 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 I you know, I, I became involved full time, uh, trying to fundraise, trying to open up doors, uh, major partnerships, um, and help with because the team was rather was rather small. Uh, so, uh, um, you know, two colleagues, two graduates from uh, from uh, the most prestigious. Uh, computer security institutes in St. Petersburg, uh, who were running a, a software company. It was a service type business, you know, doing contract work for, for different clients. Uh, they started doing this on the side. And uh, when we launched publicly in early 2017, the uptake was so, so significant that basically they dropped all the other service business and this is how three commas was born. Um, so from so it started you know, as like a is it like I mean I get not in a mutual fund but like more like an index fund if you will so it's like index no, no, a bunch no, no. of cryptos I mean, the, the, the whole the whole the the, the whole the idea even, mm. even with the with the with the portfolio the whole idea was okay you know how do you manage multiple assets across multiple exchanges you know it's hard it's very time consuming so initially okay let's have a dashboard. You know where you can see that's how you know you connect the exchange api keys to to the platform and then in very simple terms you have a unified dashboard this is how much i have on polonius this is how much i have on bitrex this is how much i have on, on binance um i can execute trades from one familiar interface as opposed to learning you know because each each exchange is different um and you know the coverage of, of altcoins was not the same, right? So you had to to have multiple exchange accounts if you're looking for a particular uh, token. You know that wasn't listed on one, but it was on, on 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 another. Plus potentially some arbitrage opportunities. But the whole idea was okay. Trading is hard. 
managing this is hard. Let's create a unified dashboard and start improving on on uh, on the tools, on on how you place an order, how you you know. There's no literally no risk management on on an exchange, except for some very basic stop loss features um, that sometimes sometimes fail if you're not careful. So um, so the idea was okay manual trading um but with much better um with a much more comprehensive feature set and the ability to have a, a you know an overall view of of your you know of your assets across across exchanges um interesting and, and, okay you know, things evolved um mm -hmm. the company was bootstrapped from day one you know was was a sort of part-time endeavor to the point where revenues started you know coming in and and the the, the team became focused 100 on 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 the trading platform on on this order management system um and you know uh i don't know if you saw the the coin desk and a few other um you know media channels yesterday they published our first release we, we successfully closed series a um hey, research, congratulations um, Basically. Hey, wait, it's right. One second. You, you paused once. So, you know, from, from a bootstrapped, you know, small group of friends, more or less, you know, to, to yesterday's announcement. I don't know if you, you saw it on Coindesk. We were featured on Coindesk on the block. Um, a few other uh, media outlets are picking up now um, the news and, and we're, we're also um, looking at a small feature in Forbes. Um, we closed our Series A. Um, we were cash flow positive since about mid 2018, um, but you know the growth kind of plateaued a bit, um, and we are very proud, very humbled, by the way, that you know um, an investor like Alameda saw the value of synergies and and they 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 cover the entire round. So we raised three million dollars from Alameda Research. Uh, it opens some very interesting opportunities now. Probably you're aware of the work they're doing in the deck space and building on Serum, Solana, um, as well as, as a unique uh, suite of product offerings. You know, you can buy Tesla stock now, you can buy Apple stock now on, uh, with crypto on, on, and trade it effectively on, on FTX. So uh, quite a journey, um, obviously with growing pains with a lot of, you know, ups and downs, but overall a pretty steady growth trajectory. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, that's that's sort of the, the, the story of how I got involved and, and what my contribution now is with Three Commas, again, looking after strategy, looking after partnerships and trying to- What's your role? Eye. What's your, I mean, I guess I'm, titles I'm, are a bit- I'm the head of strategy, major partnerships. Um, we did a lot of things um, also, you know, incorporated an entity in Canada. Company is based in Estonia. Um, uh, half of, more than half of the core team is now in Tallinn in Estonia. We still have developers in St. Petersburg. Uh, I'm here in Canada, just hired a developer um, and we're adding some resources in Hong Kong now. So a uh, fairly distributed team, but again, the core is, is still in, uh, in, in, uh, in Tallinn. Interesting, interesting. Hey, I just, just to clarify one thing. So when, uh, to talk a little bit more about three commas, and I don't know if you, you're, you're interested or, or open to this, maybe on a follow-up call, we could do like a demo. I mean, I love demos, I'm, uh, sure. or even on this one. I can probably uh, share the screen quickly. Or maybe just like a short demo, like a few minutes. But I was gonna say before we dive into it, I just wanted to clarify one thing. So um you essentially offer like a unified interface for multiple exchanges, right? So you can feed your API right. keys from XYZ. Oh, we have another uh, hardcore yeah. trader here. Hello, baby. Okay, you wanna sit down? Here, talk to Victor. Oh, yeah. Okay, bye bye. Let me pause this one oh, second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hey Victor, so I uh, just I just hit the record again. Sorry about that. Um, but I was gonna say is that Oh my, we, you know, this is, I guess, part of working from home. Yeah, Eva, look, you want to learn about Bitcoin trading? Okay, here, take your baby, go upstairs, okay? Okay, 
I'm talking to Victor. I'll be up there in a bit. Sorry about that. Um, so, so Victor, I was going to say is, is that one thing um, that I wanted to just kind of clarify is that, so you have this, pla you guys built this platform that allows, you know, multiple exchanges to be fed into one user account. Um, but it's not just that, right? You're also able to not just view your, your assets, you're able to also execute um, advanced yeah. trades, right? Which is, I think, one of the very interesting things about you guys. So, so yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, an, I'm an engineer, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I love, uh, I love a little bit of geekiness. So if you have, if you want to do a little bit of a, sh a screen share, I'd be down for that. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the screen share. I'm going to go. Here, let me give you control. There you go. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna give you a very, very quick rundown of the of the main features. Let me know when you see the screen. I can see it. Okay, perfect. Um, so again, um, you you are you're, you're correct. So what you're doing with with three commas? So three commas is a non-custodial trading technology platform. It's cloud based. We have a massive cloud infrastructure now on Amazon. Uh, on Amazon, on AWS, uh, nodes are co-located with the major exchanges for low latency, so on and so forth. Um, from a practical standpoint, what you do is basically you, you know, let's say you have a Binance account and you have, you know, this is a very small, this is a very small uh, account that I'm using for for demos. It's probably you know not doing very well, but um, so the idea is okay. You know, at a glance, you can see. Sorry, I have to switch to the real account. Um, so basically at a glance you can see, so on, on, on Binance, um, I have some funds, they're all in stablecoin right now because I exited some trades. On Bitrix, I still have um, a few things, uh, you know, in, in, in the account. But as many exchanges that you would have connected, you would see at a glance what assets you have and what the value is and, and so on and so forth. If you have any active bots running, you'll see how they perform, uh, what they're doing. I have a small bot here that seems to be doing okay. It's in green, um, so on and so forth. Uh, so we support about 24 exchanges. The list is at the bottom here. Um, but so the dashboard is just this, this entry point. So at a glance, I see where I am, what my assets are doing, how the overall perform, you know, the, the entire value of my crypto holdings, how it's doing, right? Um, the first thing that was developed early on and then fine-tuned over time is what we call smart trade. And here you'll see the real value of trading through three commas as opposed to trading on, directly on the exchange. Um, so no exchange gives you the, the, the ability to set, take profit and stop loss values concurrently because we're a cloud service you know none of none of this stuff is shows up in the exchange order book until it's executed right so you have all these all these settings um selected hopefully you you, you pick the right targets uh you can have take profit targets up to four levels as the price goes up savvy traders secure some of the profits and you can select up to four levels of, of uh, take profit the stop loss has a trading feature, which is beautiful because again, you're on autopilot. You made you made your buy, you select your, your you know, you've set up a stop loss with a trailing. Um, and you know, the stop loss moves up as the price goes up. And those are those are, you know, for, for somebody who's who's you know for an intraday trader, those are gold. Um not only that, you know, over time, uh, with input from from users, from uh, you know, from pretty, you know, we have pretty pretty savvy traders who use our platform and provide constant feedback. We even have uh, a timeout uh, setting for the stop loss. You know, um, what happens? You you know, you set a, a stop loss target and it hits, and then the price immediately jumps you're out of position. If you're not in front of your computer where you don't have the ability, you're, you're basically left out of left out of the position. With this, you can set up a five minute, 10 minute uh, window where the stop loss doesn't hit just in case the price goes up. You know, it's a, it's a you know, a bear trap and basically the price jumps. So 
I would say about 40% of the trades going through our platform. And I'm very proud to tell you that we average now about 4 billion a month in aggregate trading volumes. Um, That's insane. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite remarkable. So uh, it's remarkable in the sense that people trust our platform to place very, very large orders. Right, uh, you know, we we have uh, you know a pretty good user base, but to hit four billion a month, August was almost five. Um, it means that people got comfortable and they trust that execution is flawless, uh, minimum latency, and you know highly highly reliable. Um, so that's a smart trade, a sort of more manual way of setting up different you know uh, limit orders. Um, market or conditional orders. Um, we were talking earlier about portfolios. So, uh, you know, portfolios are very easy to set up and more importantly, very easy to liquidate. So you can see here, these are portfolios that are created by various folks on, on various exchanges, but you can create a, you know, if you like this portfolio, for example, for, for, for whatever reason, you can view it, um and see what's in it you know you, you have you know one percent sorry where is it uh you know whatever half a percent of bitcoin half a percent of ETH. so there's there's a ton of tokens in there uh, it gives you your sharp ratio your sortino ratio um and it's very easy to create you just click on the tokens click on whatever weight you want to uh, attribute to each asset in the in the portfolio you click a button and the orders are placed and your pie is filled in within 10 15 seconds if you wanted to uh, let's say make a market cap uh you know portfolio based on market cap percentage or something like that is that easy to do or would you just have to kind of figure it out yourself like what what maybe well, Bitcoin there are, represents? There, are, there are curated uh, portfolios as i said based on the blade mm. standard it's because it's, it's information in the public domain. They're rebalanced uh, monthly. And that's also a feature of our platform. You can set up you know, uh, the frequency of rebalancing. So once a month, depending on how different assets perform, market orders are at place to maintain the same distribution, right? This is like a, essentially like a sophisticated trading um, platform for retail, essentially, right? For, for well, it is, it is, it is one hundred percent for retail. Our ethos and and the whole premise of three commas was we want to put you know professional grade tools in the hands of of every retail investor out there, regardless of how much how little um, they invested in crypto. Uh, so hodling works for some, uh, but you know, because there, there's still significant volatility in crypto, there's great opportunities for intraday traders, swing traders, depending on risk appetite to set up different strategies and then move on with their lives. So you don't have to sit in front of the computer to, to have a, you know, to have this kind of portfolio rebalanced. You don't have to sit in front of, sit in front of the computer um, to uh, run a bot. You know, those are, those are, um, you know, we could spend a lot of time on bots because really this is, um, it's becoming, it's became extremely complex and, you know, it's very difficult to, to cover this, you know, I, I just want to show you, this is a daily, this is a real time feed of bots that are currently running on the platform. Whoever created them doesn't, doesn't matter. It's random and the, the system exposes them based on performance. So uh, you see this, this bot that's running uh, Bitcoin Wi-Fi. Um, it's, it's running on a short strategy, not a long strategy now. Uh, you can view it. Um, it's been making steady profits, as you can see. If you like it, um, you can just apply it to your own, you know, to your own uh, account um, and run with it. Uh, of course, you can create your own your own bots, and it's becoming you know it, there's so many options, and you can also run the same strategy on up to, you know a hundred trading pairs, not just on one. What is DCA bot? Is that dollar cost averaging or something else? Dollar, dollar cost averaging. Cool. As as the 
as the, the core functionality. But again, you can go short, you can go long uh, with stop losses, with all kinds of triggers. Um, the, 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 the important thing when you, when you create a bot is, again, we give people so much flexibility in terms of um, what trading pairs they, they, they do, but more importantly is um, uh, basically um, a very complex menu of settings. Um, we're integrated with TradingView. If you have a TradingView account, you can feed various technical indicators straight from TradingView into your bot. So if you use RSI, MACD, and, and I don't know, OBV as, as your main sort of uh, um, technical indicators, those signals can be fed directly into your bot. You don't need to program anything. You just copy a plain script from, from TradingView, connect it to, to the bot, and you're, you're off to the races. Um, there's also... Um, a uh, couple more things very quickly. Uh, one is the marketplace. So we we have a, a number of third-party providers of trading signals. Some charge, you know, some are free, some charge $48 a month, one charges $19 a month. As you can see, a lot of them are running on Binance because obviously, you know, there's high liquidity, the whole assortment of, of, of tokens. Uh, very popular with our user base, um, but you can view the stats, um, and you know this is uh, this is for Bitmex. Um, these are statistics that we provide, so it's not what the vendor is saying. This is this is this is you know real data, real time data from from our database, right? So you can see if you follow these guys, how you know you would have performed. Uh, so you can subscribe to whatever. Um, you know, a single provider you choose, and uh, again, automate your trade with inputs from from a third party. Um, the interesting thing is that as derivative markets evolve, um, you know, we see a huge a huge shift from spot, at least in terms of value, maybe not number of users, but in terms of value, a huge shift from spot to derivatives. Um, and uh, we support, we work very closely with Deribit. Um, the volumes are through the roof right now. Uh, they love it. They did a very interesting write up on, on us. Um, and again, the, the idea is that we took all the established strategies in derivative trading, you know, the bear call spread, the, the long condor, the long butterfly, the whatever, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm not even, uh, myself, I'm not totally familiar with. And this, all the strategies are now automated. You just have to set your, your base parameters. And again, trades are executed according to the chosen strategy. Nobody, I, I'm not aware of anybody else in, in crypto offering this kind of, um, you know, this kind of uh, automation on, uh, <clears throat> as far as derivatives. Hey, Victor, why derivatives. do you think that is? Why do you think that, uh, that, that derivatives have, have, you know, I guess from a value perspective, eclipsed uh, spot trading? Is that just like a natural progression of, of markets? I mean, in, in well, you know, if you look at, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, how do you hedge your, how do you hedge your bets? These are hedging instruments, primarily. Mm -hmm. uh, if you know what you're doing, um, you can, you know, and I'm I'm not suggesting for a second that I'm the, the best trader out there, um, but um, you can very very nicely reduce risk by hedging your your spot positions with some options and puts, um, and that's what hedge funds do. Uh, primary, you know, in, in 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 general, it's it's a nice addition. You know, it's Deribit and and a few other derivative exchanges that are coming coming online now. Um, you see high volumes because again, savvy traders, people who, who, who trade, you know, very large amounts, um, understand performance on a risk adjusted basis. You know, traders tend to talk about their, their, their last good trade. They never tell you about the, the, the bad ones, right? And understanding again, performance on a risk adjusted basis, maybe you don't, you know, you, you'll never 
grab you know uh, you know uh, 100% of a, of a you know of a rally um, and if you do it's more a matter of luck than, than 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 knowledge you take profit along the way you hedge your positions um, you know especially when there's there's high volatility or or some you know some major news some major events in the market and that's that's where you know futures and 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 this type of derivatives are are key you see the volumes on cme going through the roof now um and it's the same thing now as the market evolves and and i i think we're, we're very proud of being able to be first to market with with something like something like this um, very cool very cool. We're, we're, we're very. We're, we're talking almost on a daily basis with Derivit. Uh, now we started talks to, with with FTX, of course, as you know, Alameda being our investor. Uh, but we will always stay ahead of the competition uh, by working with these leading exchanges that have you know interesting new product and being right behind them with uh, trade automation technology. Crazy. Uh, and last, last but not least, mm -hmm. um, you know. Very importantly, we uh, we launched the Three Commas Academy. Nice. Um, the the platform is has become a little too complex for for a lot of newcomers. Mm. Um, and um, we're you know we're trying our best to support them. Again, we, we can't offer direct financial advice. We can't you know uh, you know we can't get into that territory uh, from a regulatory standpoint. Uh, but we have, um, and I don't know what happened here, it doesn't display properly, but um, basically we're, we're trying to, to offer from, you know, very basic courses to one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, and the folks who are putting all this together produce all our videos. We have, uh, we have an official YouTube channel. There's, so there's a, there's a little video explainer for almost every single feature that, that we have on the platform. So that's you know that's um, that's a very brief overview of what what we offer. Um, we're you know we still have a bit of a backlog now in terms of uh, because not all these tools are available on every connected exchange. So we're trying to catch up with uh, with that. Uh, and there's a lot of demand from exchanges to to integrate them. And just you know uh, we have to prioritize. We don't have sufficient resources. Um, you know, to to incorporate, to in, you know, include every exchange that knocks on our door. Uh, they see the value. Um, you know, we had statistics back. You know, last year we showed exchanges that basically people trade five to ten times more when they use our tools because it's easier and you're on autopilot. They, you know, this your computer could be off. You know all this stuff is set up in the cloud and, and it runs as market conditions are met for, you know, whatever, whatever parameters you chose. So they see the value. Um, and, you know, we, uh, uh, we're the first, because we had the, the, the volumes, we were the first to get the Binance Broker Partner Program. Um, and, uh, you know, these partnerships are essential to us. We're, we're exchange agnostic. We, we basically give people what they ask. Um, and obviously we'd like to, to, you know, enlarge our footprint and go into areas, you know, that are less, you know, they're not well serviced right now. Um, I just stopped the demo. Sorry about that, Victor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay, fine. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So hey, you, Victor, you have a, you have a yeah, bit yeah. of a sense of the breadth of, of, of product offering um, and, you know, features. Uh, we're always working on new stuff, but uh, for now, we're a bit in a catch-up mode um, and also looking over the horizon and, you know, like we're, we're, we're evaluating certain DeFi protocols that we'd like to expose to our users. Um, and um, again, it's a pool system. If our users say we want this, you know, we, uh, we vote. They, I mean, they vote on on features, and we put them, you know, in the next sprint and try to deliver. How big is it? What's your head count for your team? Right there is forty-two people full time. Forty-two. 
Mm -hmm. We're able, I mean, we're, we're running for the longest time. We're running with zero marketing budget and very lean. So uh, every penny went into development. Now, you know, in the last year or so, uh, being cash flow positive and, and growing, we were able to add more resources on, you know, in terms of uh, customer support, content management, um, and, um, uh, you know, we still have a bit of a deficit. Uh, we, we're still, you know, hiring now, both programmers and um, marketing, because as I said, our marketing effort has been um, negligible. The growth was all through, um, you know, this channel partners, primarily exchanges, as well as, uh, you know, there's a referral system uh, where any users, you know, can can invite friends and, and uh, there's a discount, there's a benefit from, from attracting new users. But, very, very cool. You know, our goal, and, and I'm, I'm saying this publicly, and, um, you know, even in the interviews we've done with these outlets, is to become uh, a premium platform. Um, we would like to, to get to the point where we generate sufficient commissions on volume from, from different exchanges and uh, offer the base functionality of the platform for free. Mm, that's that that's cool. I like that. <laughs> maybe, some, you know, maybe some maybe some some more sophisticated things like derivative trading and stuff like that would still carry um, carry a fee, but or a subscription. Um, but um, that's the whole idea: Democ democratize crypto asset management, give people the ability to manage their assets, uh, generate profits learn from each other within the ecosystem, whether it's through the Free Commerce Academy or just- Hey, hey Victor, was there also like a social element I thought you'd mentioned uh, or that yeah, you guys- well, so, so, social, tra social trading is, is, is something that's, that's very critical to us, for sure. Um, the first step of that is it was basically exposing, um, as I said, you know, all these, all these bots or portfolios or whatever, you know, uh, things created by, by users. Now, the next step is to, to, to create a, a stronger incentive for people to publish their strategies um, and allow people to, you know, for a fee to adopt their, their strategies. So that's, that's being worked on. Social alpha is phenomenal in this space because again, you know, you can't follow as a as an individual, you can't follow everything, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Other than subscribing to a pump and dump channel, which we obviously don't recommend. Um, but when you have thousands of traders, you know, with a with a common forum where they can exchange ideas, you'll see, you know, oh, look at this token, you know, like it's mooning or or whatever, uh, or mm -hmm. you know, in this market conditions, adjust your you know your settings this way or this way. So. So th this interaction is something that we don't only, uh, only encourage, but we're, we're building the next um, level of um, mirror trading, so to speak. Um, hey, um, oh, sorry, sorry, continue, yes. Yeah, one, one last quick thing that, that is, is quite important, and I don't need to turn the, the, you know, the, the screen share on. Whatever you saw in, the, in this quick demo is also available under, a button that's called paper trading. So if you're new to trading, mm. you can play with everything I showed you on a fake account. Mm. It's fake in the sense that, you know, you see as a subscriber, you have $10,000 in there, obviously, you know, virtual virtual fake dollars, but um, it's, it's, it's amazing that you can watch a video, uh, learn a trick and then play with it without risking your assets. And it's real life data. It's connected to a major exchange, so it's not it's not just theoretical. It's 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 real real time data. Um, and once you're comfortable and or build a strategy and test it, then you can flip over to, to your real account and and apply it. Uh, you know. mm. Yeah, no, I, you know, I've usually been like yourself, I've been more on the building platforms side of the, the equation. And I, I definitely don't consider myself a, a day trader. Um, but I sometimes think about, you know, like I should, because it feels at least like having been in this space for so long that there are 
predictable patterns, you know, and, and, uh, and, and what better way to capitalize on some of that um, by having some sort of like algorithmic, you know, tool that, that allows you to collate all of your different exchange feeds. I, I think it's just fascinating what you guys are doing. So you're awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, we're, I, I, you know, the value, the value is there. Um, we can, you know, we can argue back and forth. The, the point I'm trying to make is that, okay, you know, I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist. Um, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm not going to predict the future. Um, yes, it's emerging as a great new asset class. Yes, it's emerging as a phenomenal store of value, you know, better than gold in, in, in many ways. But if you look at all the headwinds, regulatory pressures, what's happening in the world at large, what's, you know, adoption is still fairly limited. I don't know how this asset will evolve. All I know is that things in crypto happen fast and volatility is there and you know if you learn a few basic uh strategies a few basic tools there's profit to be made and not worry too much about the, the price of the, the the actual asset you know you just write the volatility you know i don't have to love gold or or any commodity out there i'm you know people are mm. there created um you know to 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 to, to make a profit um, so, so this is the per space, yeah, yeah. Go continue, Victor. Sorry about that. No, I, sorry. I mean, you know, I I'm kind of long-winded, and uh, maybe we should cover some other. Oh no, 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 no. This actually, I wanted to just continue on the same topic and and segue into the next section, which was, you know, what we we talked about is, is in the sense that what is you know one truth that you hold. Um, that most others in Bitcoin or crypto may disagree with you on. Um, and it sounds like you're kind of getting to that, which is that you're, you're not a Bitcoin maximalist. I can appreciate that. And you maybe are not sold on the long-term uh, prospect of it, but you think that, you know, short-term, given the volatile nature of the industry, there is, you know, profit to be made. And as a result, you guys are building tools for that. But curious to know a little bit more about why you feel, you know, the way you do, or if you want to maybe expand on that. Well, I mean, you know, there's, there's, you know, it, it really depends on how, how far you want to zoom out. You know, if you look at a really, really macro level where the world stands today, and, you know, uh, I, I love what, Bitcoin started, um, you know, this transfer away from, you know, from centralized finance, uh, creating more, you know, uh, more equal opportunities for people to, to, you know, generate passive income and, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's, it's, it's great. At the same time, you have market pressures and liquidity at the end of the day is liquidity. You know, uh, we've seen some interesting um, positive signs for Bitcoin as, you know, Kind of detached a little bit from uh, from the equity markets, um, you know, as the equity markets, you know, kind of kind of dumped a little bit in in, in the last while. Bitcoin still maintained a, a, a solid level, um, and you know, we're looking at fourteen thousand now becoming you know the new support level. Um, I don't see Bitcoin hitting you know twenty twenty five thousand uh, anytime soon. Um, Simply because when, you know, I think it's safe to assume that you're going to see some, some major corrections in the stock market. Um, I don't, I, I think we're a bit detached from reality right now uh, as far as economic growth and the effect of COVID and, and, and whatnot. That's going to be the, the real test to see if Bitcoin maintains that. Because in the past, whenever the, the, the S&P 500 or whenever, you know, the, the, the equity markets dumped, Bitcoin dumped too, liquidity and there's a something is that I you know it's referred to as the small cap effect, um, and you know you 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 have you have still significant barriers and friction in terms of bringing fresh cash, fresh fiat into the system. Um, you know you look at Tether, the strain it's putting on the Ethereum network is phenomenal. They just moved now stuff you know quite a significant chunk. Away from Tron, they were testing. They're they're trying to see if, if, if that works back onto Ethereum. So you still have significant constraints. If you look at the the the, the flow into the crypto, you look at fiat coming in, typically into Bitcoin or ETH. Um, then it starts trickling down into other majors, then into the shit coins. Pardon my French. 
Um, and and then you know the cycle goes goes, goes on and on. And on. Right now, Bitcoin dominance is high. That's where the smart money is. Um, all coins kind of, you know, uh, suffered. Um, and the expectation is that you're gonna, you know, you're gonna see that 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 rinse repeat cycle going on for 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 quite a while. If you look at, you know, three years ago, you saw fiat into crypto. Now it's mainly tether and stable coins. And I'm not totally comfortable with with you know the the overall access to liquidity and and you know access to to proper exits from 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 the market. There's still a lot of friction. If you're on Binance, you can you know I mean let's 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 not let's not say Binance necessarily, but if you're on an exchange, if you're on on uh, on Coinbase. Great, because you can exit directly to fiat if you know if you choose so, or if the market uh, drops. If you're on 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 all these altcoin casinos, you have to go through a stable coin and then hopefully to fiat. We don't know how, how at scale, at real scale, how this would work. I'm not I'm not totally convinced that that uh, the you know all the all these things in the market are, are stable or robust enough to uh you know to to do well in a liquidity crisis like the overall equity market is so victor just sum up it sounds like what you're saying is is that you have a lot of question marks around the stable coins uh that have emerged in the last few years and you believe that maybe that is artificially inflating the bitcoin price is that safe to well say, i mean or? yes that's that's what that's what happened in 2017 and i'm not i'm not I'm not subscribing to any of the conspiracy theories uh, at all. But but without Tether, you know, you wouldn't have, you know, on one hand without Tether, and on the other hand without Binance, you wouldn't have had that that insane uh, rally, uh, you know, where Tether was printed, you know, in the billions, and nobody nobody knew whether it was, you know, really backed by 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 fiat or or or, or not, and. You know, I mean, there's 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 several other several other you know aspects of it because now you have future markets, you have derivatives, and those typically tend to sort of dampen price action. What happened to gold? What happened to silver over time? Could potentially happen happen to Bitcoin? And this is not by retail. Now it's becoming dominated by by institutional players who are investing in Bitcoin, bringing it into treasuries um as you know as a as a pretty solid hedge for the time being but we have still don't know how regulate you know regulatory environments are going to evolve you have a huge disparity there's still opportunities for arbitrage on a regulatory standpoint you know incorporate in the Seychelles or or somewhere and and go for it exclude the US market but but still you know uh, uh carry on with significant transactions. So I'm mixing, I, I, I realize that I'm mixing in here a lot, of, a lot of issues, but I always go back to, you know, was Bitcoin really created as a speculative instrument, as a store of value? It was created as a medium of exchange and that idea is, is, is pretty much lost. Nobody buys Bitcoin now to transact peer to peer or buy stuff. Bitcoin because they think it's going to appreciate tremendously, and it's still quite possible. I just see a lot of headwinds, and uh, you know what happened over time in in in, in other you know uh, in other markets could 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 happen to crypto. You also have the danger that you must admit that you know there's thousands of of tokens out there that they're valueless, dead projects. And somehow the price still moves, and I, you know, I don't want to give you specific examples because, you know, even even some that that were born here in Toronto, I know the project is dead, yet the token is listed somewhere, and it still goes up and down in value. For what reason? Is, there's no correlation between, you know, development, you know, use cases or or, or anything. So there's a lot of faulty to tokenomics, um, and then you have the you have this new wave of DeFi that again it's sucking, it's sucking a lot of 
of of uh, you know of, of, of value out of out you know out of out of the system into these yield protocols. How sustainable they are, I don't know. Um, again, relying on uh, you know waiting for Messiah, basically the scaling of Ethereum, it, it's still a pretty iffy value proposition to me. So I expect that in the next couple of years, um, you know, a purge has to happen. There's no rhyme or reason for a lot of these utilities. Hey, 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 Victor, what are your thoughts on uh, Solana? I haven't, I haven't looked too much in depth. Uh, we just got access to to GitHub uh, with with our new investors and and stuff. Obviously, it's it's, it's becoming a priority for us to integrate Serum um, and uh, to you know to see how we can. Um, you know, we have some experience because we integrated the, the Binance Dex, but this is a different underlying technology. So we're mm -hmm. it's early days, maybe in a future conversation, I'll make a, you know, I made a note here and I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to, um, to be a little more educated, uh, but I wouldn't and, and, to say much today. And, and Victor, um, so, so the same question is last, but I guess as it pertains to the world at large, and, and you can you can pass on this question if you if you haven't maybe thought about it, but just curious, do you have any, you know, outside of let's say Bitcoin and crypto and all that, like are there any again, you know, a lot of weirdness going on in the world today, but anything that you kind of see as being maybe true that most others may disagree with you on? Um, I mean, you know, I'm. I'm very much concerned with income inequality as, as, as being, you know, um, and, and, and it's not just income inequality because of politics or, or because those are cyclical and can change and, and can, you know, evolve. I, I'm more concerned with income inequality now becoming, you know, um, uh, like a, uh, basically built in a systemic issue. You're either in tech or you're not. And, you know, there's, there's not a lot done. Uh, and I'm not talking about, you know, Canada or the US or, or the, Western, the Western world. I'm talking about the, the world at large. You know, it's, it's, you know that, that's why I had a lot, of, you know, and I still do have high hopes for, for this whole DeFi idea to, to, to evolve and, you know, um, and start creating opportunities for, for people who actually really need it. Here, we're just talking from a speculative standpoint. Um, and that's what I like to see. I don't, you know, we don't have, um, we don't have a standard. We don't have, you know, it's still a very, uh, there's still a lot of friction and it's difficult to, 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 to transact in, you know, in this, um, new FinTech world detached from, from, from legacy, but that's, that, that, that's my big concern. Victor, have you heard of something called Ubi? Uh, universal basic income? Yeah, of course. Of course. What are your thoughts on it? Negative, positive, indifferent? Short, short answer is positive. Um, you know, longer answer depends where, because, you know, we're not necessarily all Nordic countries, you know, more, more homogenous countries that trust their government. So difficult to apply in different, you know, in, in, in other places in the, in the world. Um, but you know that's what technology was supposed to do from day one to free up free us up from you know certain tasks and allow us to evolve as individuals and spend more time you know on, on uh, you know uh, things other than survival. So I am for it. I I I I, I, I am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now I think about this stuff a lot because as I mentioned to you before I got into Bitcoin, I spent almost eight, eight, nine years in robotics and automation and kind of got to get a glimpse of where the world was going. And it felt like to me that this is not a position of a Luddite, like to say that, you know, that, that, that computers are advancing at a, you know, at an insane speed right now. And it is foreseeable in our lifetime that, you know, this, whatever you want to call it, this, this next uh, evolution of, of computing technology may uh, evolve into something far more powerful than we've ever seen before that is maybe capable of doing everything we do far better. 
Um, you're already seeing it with, you know, driving cars, um, you know, with robotics and, and, and manufacturing. And um, so, yeah, so I, I do think a lot about it. Again, I'm not for the, the notion of like printing money and devaluing the people who have worked hard, because that to me seems like not so fair. Um, but I do think a lot about, uh, hey, there's this project called Good Dollar, which uh, you, actually you've heard of eToro. You must have. Sure. Well, <laughs> so maybe, one of the, in a sense, we're com, you know, competitors, maybe. Yeah, yeah. With, with so so the, founder, the founder of eToro is a guy named Yanni. And yep. he is, uh, he's actually, I think one of the, the, the his name is on the white paper for colored coins, like the whole idea of colored coins. Um, anyway, so he recently launched something called Good Dollar, which is like, Ubi on, you know, on the blockchain, Ethereum blockchain. So it's not necessarily funded by governments per se. It's funded through like the profits generated through automation of like DeFi protocols to some extent. Um, so they take the profits that are generated from, uh, from, you know, from these automation and they feed it back into some sort of Ubi program. Anyway, this, it's pretty fascinating. Hey, listen, um, you know, I, this has been like an hour and a half, I think almost. So Victor, I wanted to give you a chance um, to, 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 I mean, guess, I mean, share any sort of like, uh, I guess, you know, closing comments also, you know, the website uh, for three commas and Twitter handles and just, you know, I don't know, places that you want people to, you know, learn more. And, and then I was also going to say is if you're down, this was super exciting. Uh, so in the next month, uh, two months, whenever, uh, you know, your, your schedule permits, I'd love to do a, a follow up as well. Yeah, it would be would be would be timely, uh, because, uh, you know, having secured this round of financing, it Put, puts us in a different position. So we're going through a deep dive into our strategy. We're trying to reimagine the future because now you know we have we have the the financial resources to to be a little more daring and and, and you know look at future products and, and things that we want to want to bring to to our yeah. Users. Congratulations, by the way, Victor, on that on that. I mean, sure. cash flow positive. Binance's first uh, broker I just landed Series A from Almeida, and the the guys behind FTX, and so it's just like it seems like you guys are on fire. So really, really happy for you, my friend. We, yeah, we want to maintain this good momentum. So yeah, two three months from now, I think we're, we're going to have more interesting things to to talk about. Three commas that I owe. Uh, that's the that's the domain name, and you'll find us on Telegram. You'll find us on uh, on on pretty much any uh, every other channel. We're going to be a lot more present now that we can hire additional uh, resources. We're going to be a lot more active. Um, and you know, parting words. You know, I know I sometimes sound negative, and I think I'm. You know, I've always been the skeptic on duty. Uh, I've always, you know, looked at. Uh, blind spots, and um, that's not to say I'm 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 extremely passionate about this. I believe that uh, that that crypto uh, can bring tremendous value. I would like to see a higher adoption. I would like to you know uh, I'd like to see more um, uh, you know more financial inclusion in areas of the world that are you know you know behind and and who need it most. Um, to do this for institutional investors, sure, there's there's good money to be made. But I we love where we are in retail, and you know uh, when uh, when a kid from Vietnam uh, who you know has like a third of a Bitcoin equivalent crypto assets, you know tells us on Telegram that he's paying his tuition with the small profits he's making by trading on three commas, uh, you know made me cry and that's that's who we are we want to help everyone succeed in a you know it, it, so many things are still at the mvp level in this space no matter how successful you know even bigger protocols even you know the, the, the guys who are attracting now you know Ave and, and so on and so forth we're attracting huge amounts of money it's still early days we don't know how this is going to evolve uh we don't know how all, all the all the you know, all the central digital currencies are, are going to affect this. They typically stifle innovation because, you know, if you look at what China's building now, uh, it's not just launching the, uh, a central bank, you know, a central uh, digital currency. They're building a whole uh, transaction system around it with obvious goals of, of, of sort of, you know, detaching uh, from, from the US dollar. But, 
you know, if they start pushing that and you look how far behind we are, uh, when we're talking about the Western world and the US in particular, you know, there's significant threats on the, on, on, on the horizon. How this is all gonna play out, I, I, you know, I'm not gonna venture to make a guess right now. The opportunities are huge. I'm very bullish on, 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 on a lot of stuff that's happening. I'm still waiting for a Wintel moment in crypto, and maybe I'll close with that. A what moment? Wintel. Windows, a Wintel moment. You want to explain? Windows yeah. Intel. You know. Oh, okay. PCs <laughs> exploded. You know, when software and hardware started working together. Same in, you know, you, you, you can say that, you know, uh, you know, when you look at the internet, the same kind of explosion started when you had started having, you know, some, some clear protocols, some, some standards, and then the switching technology and, and, you know, all this, all this advances in telecom started, started working together. You, you don't have to... What does that look like in Bitcoin, that, that Cambrian yeah, explosion? I, no idea. I, I don't I don't necessarily look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is sort of, you know, the, the gold standard right now in terms of robustness, in terms of, you know, it's proven that it's solid. It's 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 you know, there's still no better substitute for proof of work yet. You know, we're talking about proof of authority, proof of stake, delegated proof of stake, all this hybrid things. Nothing is 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 as robust yet as as you know. But if you look at energy consumption, if you look at the capex, and you look at all, all these things, you know, um, you know, for, for Ethereum, let's say to 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 become the de facto standard, you know, um, and, and I'm, I'm sure they're working towards that, um, you know, with with, with the upcoming uh, upgrades and, and and changes. But to have, you know, to, to me, blockchain should be like a utility. I have my you know, my hydro bill, I have my water bill, and I have my, you know, a small, you know, payment into uh, a network that allows me to access all kinds of, you know, all kinds of product as, as, an, as an example. I, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm highly suspicious of, of one thing. Simply because we're human, for me, the moment you, you, you put decentralized governance with incentives in the same sentence, you got a problem. And you know that's a discussion maybe for another day. I'm fascinated by the epistemic agency problem, whether it, whether it relates to the crypto world or AI, you have the same problem. What is an agent? What is your who defines and controls the agency aspect in in this complex systems that are opaque to the masses at least? And you know, are, are we creating a new religion for, for most people that you have to trust it because it's blockchain? I don't know. I, I don't I don't I don't see the evolution going 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 too fast that way. The opacity and the friction in, in you know all these new technologies make make it very difficult to to um, to to view this at a you know hundred a thousand x scale. That's my that's my concern. Man, yeah. uh, we should do a whole yeah. session on that alone because I have a lot of interests wow. in in AI as well. Uh, yeah, well, and and as I said, the the common thread there between AI and what's being and you know you look at Ben Gertzel and these guys with Singularity.net, they're doing phenomenal work trying to 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 merge these two worlds of AI and blockchain. They're not alone. Uh, there was an MIT project. Um, also trying to deploy AI tools, um, you know, via blockchain technology, and there's similar efforts elsewhere. But you know, one one of the 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 the, the, the major issues right now when you transfer decision making to a to an artificial or digital agent, to me that is not well defined. It's not well controlled, and opens a whole huge Pandora's box of ethical and and uh, you know discussion. Very There's interesting. Thing, some sort of a standard, some sort of a universal approach would would allow the space to to evolve more more rapidly, more equitably, because right now the the, the asymmetric distribution of assets in crypto is one of the red flags that you know is still up in my mind.
man away yeah from the original intent hmm. and you know uh um sort of you know um sort of a major issue because that's yeah. not what this why this you know why bitcoin was created yeah uh, but as you said you know uh, i don't overstay my welcome uh i tend to ramble but oh uh, no no i could do this all day there, man there, uh, but, but I wanted to, I wanted to sum up a couple things though on the three commas thing, right? So so in my in my view, um, risk, okay, risk is a function of information and control, uh, and I can maybe go into that maybe in our next call what I mean by that, right? But but essentially the way to reduce your risk is to have more information. Uh, and have more control over whatever it is. Actually, maybe I'll just quickly share the example. So let's say you and I are sitting beside each other and um, an anvil, a huge metal thing is gonna fall, okay, right here. I know that it's gonna fall and you don't, okay? I have the information that it's gonna fall on top of us and you don't, so who's at more risk? You, <laughs> because you don't know. <laughs> I know it's gonna fall here so I can move out of the way. So, so information, is important. And the second is control. So let's say both you and I know that this anvil is going to fall on top of us, but my legs are shackled to the table and I can't move even if I wanted to, then I'm at more risk. So information and control are the two things that um, I believe are a function of what risk is. And so if I were to sum up what three commas is doing, number one, it gives you, you know, information across all the exchanges, right? So you're able to kind of glean at a glance, uh, uh, gather what's happening kind of in the industry, if you will, or within your portfolio. Um, so a tremendous amount of information. And then secondly, you guys actually provide people with the tools and the automation and the bots to exercise control. So if this happens, then I want that to happen. And to be able well, to do that, I think, is, is super powerful. Sure. And, and again, you know, when you talk about control, you can take this discussion to the next level of probability, right? So our tools allow you to, to set up your, your risk parameters and, and look at what is the risk reward ratio for, for a certain transaction, you know, because you know, nobody's going to guess the, the, the bottom or the top of a market is very, very unusual. And even, you know, we back tested several AI algorithms and, and, and things that, you know, look, look great, but, you know, in certain market conditions fail miserably. Um, and I feel more comfortable giving even people the ability to say, okay, this is my risk. This is my appetite for risk. This is how much I want to risk. Um, you know, I won't trade with my whole stash. Uh, if it goes from here to here, I'm happy. I'll take that small profit and not be envious of somebody who may have captured more. Because if you do that, on a daily basis, on a, or on a regular basis, with with you know, and add the compounding uh, compounding effect, you're going to do quite well. And 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 again, you know, like Buffett said, you know, it's not it's not greed that that spoils the markets. It's envy. Uh, you know, I made two percent instead of being happy. I'm unhappy because somebody made ten percent. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, the, psycho the psychology of trading, you know, is 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 uh, is, is a fascinating domain. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I really appreciate that the conversation was fun and yeah. why <laughs> yeah. I hope we can reconnect uh, on some of this other esoteric uh, subjects. Uh, and uh, let's, let's do that, Victor. Sounds good, man. Uh, okay. So I'm going to bring, I, yeah, yeah, thank you for coming on. So I'm going to, I'm going to kill it right now. So three, two, one.